Kakwenza Rukiraba Saija was not a new name to those who read, especially since he had authored controversial books such as The Greedy Barbarian. So his arrest in December 2021 did not come as a surprise. His torture, though, under detention, left a sour taste. Injecting me, they were injecting me like six injections every six hours. The horrendous scars on his body spoke for themselves, telling us torture is still alive and well in this country. Following his release, Kakwenza fled into exile in Germany. We might be in the heart of Africa, but when Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a special military operation to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine in February, we felt the repercussions. By media, Almost everything, from rapidly increasing fuel prices to food prices, were being blamed on that war. In February, there were loud whispers about the hospitalization and subsequent death of former Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya. What started as whispers when he was flown to a hospital in Seattle, USA, graduated to shouts when government announced that it would spend 2.5 billion shillings on a state funeral for Olanya. The money-hungry antiques of the Acholi parliamentary group did not help the situation. It had earlier been worsened when Olanya's father insisted that his son had been poisoned. And an angry wind briefly disrupted his burial. You have seen what happened. And I'm telling you, many things are going to happen. We need government to be serious. Then, when a liter of petrol averaged 6,500 shillings in July, the rising fuel prices finally caught our attention. Simanyova government yetu neche tulooza ko bate cha tulooza ko katifebalinga bebava ko tulinga bata cha liba nansi. Once again, a car became a luxury. The volume of traffic in Kampala fell significantly as everyone peeled their eyes, hoping to catch sight of fuel tankers from Busia border. Our companies can only store up to 10 days maximum. We don't have big storage facilities. The government blamed the Russia-Ukraine war, never mind that the fuel reserves in Jinja City had fallen empty long before that war began. We also learned that there had been massive crop failure during the first planting season. The rains had come too little, too late. For the first time, a kilo of rice was cheaper than a kilo of maize flour. Even the poor man's alternative of cassava flour cost 2,000 shillings a kilo. Then, people began dying of hunger in Karamoja, prompting well-wishers and the government to donate food to those affected. In July, the Makere University Guild elections were engulfed in violence. Bewate Betungura, a student of Uganda Christian University, was caught in the chaos and stabbed. He died from his wounds. Makere University Council suspended the Students' Guild and deferred the polls. In the same month, Nobat Mao, the President General of Uganda's oldest political party, was appointed Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. In opposition circles, his appointment was deemed a scandal since in March he had sworn never to join the government and leave his party behind. He's now proving a thought this way, a thought what? That, that, that way. way. President Nobat Mao, we have been quiet for two years. You have been tarnishing our party. However, he had promised a surprise to those he said were wallowing in victimhood, and he delivered. In August, flash floods in eastern Uganda killed 29, with 23 of these people dying in Bale City in one day. The floods swept 14 bridges, 9 cars, 3 motorcycles, and damaged 9 schools and 3 health centers. More than 700 domestic animals and 4,500 chicken and ducks were also killed. The death of General Eli Tumwine further polarized Ugandans. While many mourned his demise and celebrated his achievements, others took to social media to celebrate the passing of the former security minister. His unpopular stance on a number of issues that affected society was cited as the cause of celebration.
in September, Nyege Nyege fever gripped the country. After Honorable Sarah Pendi complained that the festival promotes immorality, the Speaker of Parliament directed that the festival be cancelled. However, she had not counted on the fact that Ugandans love to party. And right now what I'm expecting is massive vibe you get. And what I can tell you, I'm ready for that vibe. That's what I can say. Bro, I don't know if you have anything to ask, bro. Even the Prime Minister threw her weight behind the revelers. The event will take place because um, it, it, yeah, the, the timing, we have given them a very short time. Some people had already booked tickets. Of course, Nyege Nyege happened and it sold out. Just when we thought we were done with pandemics, Ebola hit us. A lockdown was declared in Mobende and Kasanda districts with the Daily Telegraph, a British newspaper projecting that Ebola would kill 500 Ugandans by April 2023. And what is an epidemic without money? A bitter fight erupted when donors, citing corruption, sidestepped the government and channeled all the cash and support to implementing partners. When women fight, everyone is drawn into the fray. Just when we thought Pasis Namugansa, the state minister for lands, was being censured for abuse of office and misconduct, she came up shooting from the hip, claiming she was being fought because Anita Among, the Speaker of Parliament, had contracted a fraudulent marriage. If I say you forged your marriage with your so-called husband, Magogo, you as the Speaker of Parliament, and there are penalties under the law, someone who does such an act even ceases to be in a public office. Apparently, Namganza's husband had been forced to sign the marriage certificate. He has since revoked the marriage. Yes. The Mohozi tweets, He is not only a senior presidential advisor for special operations, but a prolific tweeter to boot. His tweets ranged from praising President Putin, declaring support for the Tigray rebellion, and sympathizing with the M23, and offering a hundred cows for Giorgia Meloni, the Prime Minister of Italy, to threatening to crush journalists who abuse him. Jeno Muhozi has kept us entertained. His father even wrote to Kenyans on Twitter, apologizing when his son wrote that he would capture Nairobi in two weeks. Well, 2023 will be a long year. So here's to more tweets and birthday parties. Gillian Nantume, NTV, Weekend Edition.